Hey everybody, it's Michelle with Florida Keys Birding and today we're talking about the secret life of the yellow-billed cuckoo. So you know those house guests that show up unannounced, they eat all your food and then they disappear like they were never there? Well, this fall I had a visitor just like that. But it wasn't a friend or a distant cousin, it was a yellow-billed cuckoo. Not just one, but a mama cuckoo and her baby hanging out in the Florida Keys in my backyard for weeks. And let me tell you, these birds are something else. I got loads of videos of them in action, eating caterpillars, like it was just an all-you-can-eat buffet. But before I show you all of that, let's talk about what makes these birds so special. So let's talk about migration and habitat. Why were they here and why were they in my tree? So yellow-billed cuckoos are kind of like snowbirds, um, but instead of retiring to Florida, they just pass through on their way to South America. They breed across the eastern U.S., parts of the Southwest, and even southern Canada. Then they make a marathon journey all the way down to places like Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, and places like that in South America for the winter. They're basically the ultimate tropical vacationers, except they don't have to deal with lost luggage. So why the Florida Keys? That's their pit stop. Like pulling into a gas station on a road trip, except instead of chips and energy drinks, they're here for the fat, fuzzy caterpillars. <laughs> and my tree? Apparently, it was the best diner in town. It was. There was tons of fat, fuzzy, white caterpillars <laughs> in the fig tree right next door in my neighbor's yard. So it was not technically in my yard, but from my back porch, it's literally right next to my house. So it was right there. So I could, I could clearly see the cuckoo. It wasn't difficult to spot. But actually, spotting a yellow-billed cuckoo, the art of looking for a bird that doesn't want to be seen, can be pretty difficult. People don't normally see them, and they're not really easy to find for the most part. Now, if you've never seen a yellow-billed cuckoo before, don't feel bad, because these birds are professional hide-and-seek champions. They stay up high in the trees, barely moving, and their brown and white plumage blends perfectly with the branches. You could have one right over your head judging you and you'd never even know but if you want to find one here is the trick so every time that i'm looking for them i usually end up finding them because i'm usually watching for movement in the trees for other birds but sometimes i'll see something like a i'll see so you know when you're looking for warblers or something and you see like you know like small branches moving this bird is large, so it makes kind of like a large movement. So you'll see branches moving in a big way and you'll be like, something really heavy just moved that branch and I don't think it was an iguana. <laughs> and that's usually how I find them because I'm like, oh, or they're really long tail. It's like a really long striped looking tail. So sometimes I'll see a flash of that long tail when they move and I'll know it's a cuckoo. So I've been able to find them like that. I usually find one once a season. Another trick is that they make this low knocking noise. It usually happens before it rains, which is why some people call them rain crows. <laughs> so next time you hear that weird knocking sound in the trees, don't panic. It's not a ghost, it's just a cuckoo predicting the weather. <laughs> and here's what it sounds like. Pretty distinct, huh? <laughs> I know, right? Who could mistake that for another bird? So when it comes to the diet for the yellow-billed cuckoo, it is the ultimate caterpillar control squad, okay? So because these birds are basically nature's pest control, one yellow-billed cuckoo can eat thousands of caterpillars in a season. And not just any caterpillars. Like I said, big fuzzy fat ones <laughs> that most birds will not touch. Um, here in the Keys, they go after tent caterpillars, fall webworms, and other juicy little critters hanging out in the trees. I watched my yellow-billed cuckoo gobble down caterpillar after caterpillar like it was a competitive eating contest. If there was a trophy for the most caterpillars consumed, this bird would have won it, that's for sure. So I know I did say that I saw this mama cuckoo with her baby cuckoo. So let's talk about nesting and raising young. 
they're kind of the fast track to adulthood. And they do have some interesting and strange nesting behaviors we're going to talk about as well. So about that baby cuckoo in my tree. Yellow-billed cuckoos have one of the fastest growing chicks in the bird world, so that's pretty interesting. Most songbirds take a couple of weeks to leave the nest, but cuckoos, they're out in seven to nine days. That's like going from newborn to teenager in a week. <laughs> and here's where it gets even weirder. Sometimes these cuckoos don't even bother raising their own kids. Deadbeat baby daddy and baby mama's over here. <laughs> Just like their European cousin, the common cuckoo, they occasionally will lay eggs in other birds' nests. This is called brood parasitism. Basically, they will pull a fast one on some unsuspecting warblers or robins. Not always, but often, they'll earn the reputation as part-time nest freeloaders. But it was pretty interesting because this baby was actually being raised by the mama because the baby cuckoo was actually following the mama and the daddy cuckoo around this big fig tree looking for caterpillars and they were actually feeding the baby. So you can see it in these photos here how the mama was feeding the baby or the daddy. I'm not sure if it was the mom or the dad, but yeah, so this was pretty interesting. There was no brood parasitism going on here. The baby was looking for food from the mom and the dad. So it was so super duper cute. I actually ended up seeing this guy in the fig tree in my front yard first and I was like, hold on, that one looks a little bit different from the ones I saw these past couple of weeks. Um, so I kind of followed it and got some pictures of it and then I saw that it went to the big fig tree in my neighbor's yard right next door that I can see from my backyard and I saw it start feeding the baby and I was like oh my gosh it was so adorable it was so super duper cute so it was pretty cool to see that. Um, so you know I always like to talk about conservation and why these birds need our help. So the yellow-billed cuckoo is actually doing okay in the eastern U.S., but the western populations are in trouble. Habitat destruction along rivers has led to major declines in 2014, and the western population was officially listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. So what's causing the problem? Of course, as always, deforestation, agriculture, and urban developments wiping out riparian woodlands that they rely on. And since they migrate such long distances, they also face threats like window collisions, like most other migratory birds, and climate change affecting their food sources. So again, I always tell people it's so important to advocate against overdevelopment and all these things that they're trying to do and overfishing and just overusing all of our resources that I just don't get behind. Um, and of course, window collisions we can prevent. We can put this, those stickers on our windows and stuff like that. So that's always something that we can do. And I always tell people, if they had to bulldoze your yard to build your house, put some natives back. Put as many trees as you can back in or some native bushes. And if you're in South Florida and you want yellowbill cuckoos in your yard, the strangler fig is the best. And I'm telling you, the strangler fig, it's the best for not only the yellowbill cuckoo, but lots of other birds. I've seen up to like 12 or 14 different bird species in one strangler fig. Now I know it's a tree that not everybody likes because it gets massively large and the roots will can get under your foundation and stuff like that so they say don't plant it right next to your house but if you have at least a decent amount of land you know plant one a little you know far away far away from the front of your house or something like that uh plant one the farthest away that you can because it is such an important tree for birds in south florida and like i said you're going to attract everything during migration and outside of migration and the strangler fig i love the strangler fig it's my favorite <laughs> you can find so many birds in there so having a yellow bill cuckoo and its baby in my tree for weeks was the coolest bird experience i've ever had these birds are mysterious, they're a little bit weird, and a whole lot of fun to watch. If you've ever seen a yellow-billed cuckoo, I want to hear about it. Drop a comment below and let me know. If you love birds, migration stories, or just want more cool nature videos from the Florida Keys, hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and remember, next time you hear a strange noise in your trees, look up. You just might have a cuckoo watching you back with a mouthful of caterpillars. <laughs> Thanks. Bye everybody.